In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In 2018, National Geographic came out with a series called One Strange Rock. One Strange Rock tells the story of how life survives and thrives on planet Earth from the unique perspective of the very few people who have seen our planet from outer space, astronauts. The show is narrated by Will Smith, and the one line that stuck out to me the most in this show was that we're all here because of the storm. You see, in the beginning, our world was created by a massive cosmic storm, and that throughout time, life has continued due to storms. For example, the comet that most likely wiped out the dinosaurs created a huge dust storm that most likely led to the creation of life on this planet like we know it today. So through death, there was new life. Sound familiar? Think about it. The story of our salvation, the story of Jesus, all connects back to the reason that life as we know it exists. The reason that we are gathered here together is because of a storm. The storm that was Jesus' death and resurrection. In Matthew, right before Jesus dies, it states, From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. Then, when Jesus takes his last breath, it says that the earth shook and rocks were split in two. Jesus' death in itself was a great storm, a storm that Jesus walked through to be able to walk into new life. You see, the story of our salvation is the story of how the moments in our lives that are like raging storms are what have brought us to new life. And we come together as a church to reflect on those storms, to help one another through them, and to prepare for the next one. And in these storms, that is where we experience God. When God came to Moses in the wilderness, God came to him in a dense cloud, like the coming of a storm. In Exodus, it says, on the morning of the third day, there was thunder and lightning, as well as a thick cloud on the mountain and a blast of a trumpet, so loud that all the people who were in the camp trembled. Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God. They took their stand at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord had descended upon it in fire. The smoke went up like the smoke of a kiln, while the whole mountain shook violently. As the blast of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses would speak and God would answer him in thunder. You see, God speaks to us through storms, whether that be a nice rainstorm or a volcanic eruption. God invites us to meet us, meet her in these storms. In Exodus, it goes on to say that when the Lord descended upon Mount Sinai, the Lord summoned Moses up to the top of the mountain and Moses went up. Moses sets off into what sounds like, to me, a volcanic eruption. Think about it. A smoking kiln, shaking mountain, blasts of a trumpet. Doesn't seem so smart on Moses' part, does it? Yet Moses doesn't seem phased. In fact, he just speaks to the storm, and God answers him in thunder. Moses has so much faith in God that he sets off into the storm to go up the mountain. And while he is up there, God not only gives the Ten Commandments, but God also speaks a plethora of ordinances, laws, and words of wisdom. God speaks to Moses for about 15 chapters. Like, whoa. Because Moses was brave enough to walk into that storm, the people of Israel, Islam, and Christianity now have a firm foundation for what God is saying to us. But this experience was not easy for Moses. And when he comes back down to the people of Israel, he is so changed that the skin of his face is shining. 
In fact, Moses is so changed that he has to wear a veil over his face because the change is just too much for the rest of the people of Israel. And I totally understand that. I've walked through many storms before, and I'm certain that all of you have walked through even more. And you know that once God speaks to you, then you're never the same. A storm changes you. But science tells us that for life to not just survive but thrive on this planet, we depend on these storms. I mean, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism would not exist if Moses was not brave enough to weather the storm on Mount Sinai. And we wouldn't be here today if our God, Jesus, was not willing to pass through the storm that brought him to death. Because without that storm, we would not have the gift of eternal life. Without that storm, we would not have the hope that cultivates a church. Now, thanks to that storm, we can be bold to share hope just like the women that we met during the children's message today. Those women who fought for the right to vote, they created a storm of protests and rallies and were led through that storm with the hope of greater equality. And women would not have the right to vote today if it wasn't for that storm. Jesus shares the importance of storms with us in our gospel today because Where he is transfigured, where is it? Where does it become clear to the disciples that, hey, I just, I don't just think, I know this guy is God. It's in a storm on the top of a mountain. That is where God is revealed to the disciples. Eight days after Jesus spoke to the disciples about his death and resurrection, he takes three of them up to the mountain to pray where they experience a literal storm. One so strong, just like Moses, Jesus' face is changed, and his clothes become dazzling white, and Moses and Elijah join him. Then from a cloud, a voice says, This is my son, my chosen, listen to him. The experience was so amazing for Peter that he says to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not realizing what he said. You see, no matter whether the storm that we are experiencing is one that we want to just get out of, or one that is so breathtaking we just want to sit in and experience, the storm is never a place that you can stay. You always have to walk out of it. Just like the women who promoted women's rights to vote, There came a time to move on from that storm and on to the next one. So as much as all of us would like to make a place where we could just sit and soak in the unchanging storm of God, that's not how life on this planet works. From the birth of the cosmos, to the age of the dinosaurs, to women's rights, to not just survive but thrive on this planet. We are called to not just live into the hope that Jesus leads us through the storm out to the other side, but to share with the world how our storms have transformed us. Amen.